So hello everyone, in this video PowerPoint, we will be looking at um, data modeling. Um, specifically, we are going to be talking about ER modeling and two important concepts, which are maximum and minimum cardinality. So the resource that I've given you to look at in reference to your open textbook is the Enterprise Entity Relationship Data Model. It's chapter eight. And I am going to open that quickly here. This is chapter eight, the entity relationship data model. Um, we will be going over important concepts here. Um, as you read this portion, um, just take a caution to pay more attention to my video PowerPoint here as not all the aspects here are applicable, but certain aspects are like a review of the different types of keys that we have already talked about. Um, and also null values and relationships, but um, you might want to skim through this, um, keeping the caution of paying more attention to the video slide that we are going to talk about some of the major aspects that we need to focus on in this class. So I just wanted to do a review. We have talked about the different types of keys. Um, in case you need a refresher, please make sure you go back to the PowerPoints that we have covered earlier in the semester. But um, keys are a defining factor in tables. They are used to identify specific records. Um, and we have learned about candidate keys. These are, again, the set of all the keys in a, in a table that are eligible to become a primary key. The primary key is the one key that we pick from the list of eligible keys to become the key of that particular table. A composite key is when a key is made of more than one attribute. We call that as composite or composite. Um, foreign key, when a copy of the primary key is placed in a relating table, we call that as a foreign key in the table that the primary key, the copy of the primary key is placed in. So foreign keys are really used to relate tables together, and that brings up us up to the topic of relationships. Um, relationships are the glue that holds the tables together because we split our data into multiple tables so that we don't have the redundancy problems that we have been talking about. But again, we need to bring data together from multiple tables and we relate these tables together so that when we need to pull data from multiple tables, we can bring them together. So as when you wrote your SQL statements as well, um, and if you pay close attention in your inner joints, you actually link the two tables together based on the primary key from one table and the foreign key, which was placed as a copy of the primary key in the other table. So they are used to connect tables together, foreign keys. Um, and ER models define the logical design of database. So this is another important area. Uh, when we are designing a database, especially large databases, we have to create a, temp, um, a prototype for it, and we use ER models for that. This was developed by Peter Chen, and it's used in the context of database modeling. They are used to represent ER diagrams, and these diagrams mainly consist of entities, attributes and the relationships between these entities. So before we can start building these ER models in SQL Workbench, we need to first understand some underlying concepts that define an ER model. What are some aspects? And that's really what we're going to start looking at. So ER models are very beneficial. They are used for designing databases. They're used for troubleshooting databases because when you have to look at a particular problem in a data environment, looking at the ER model is like looking at a map that helps us pinpoint where exactly might be the issue. It's used in informa business information processing for re-engineering, education, and research. And I do have a link um, that I've really provided here. And this is also another um, useful um, resource, which I'll be again sharing. So this is the link um, that I've provided, and this kind of gives you an overview of what is an ER diagram. It talks about the history of ER models. As you can see, this is Peter Chen, and he's considered to be the father of ER models. Um, and um, you have some relationship diagrams here, like some of the functionalities of why we have to use ER diagrams, entities, 
and henceforth. Again, as you're going through this, some of the concepts we will be covering a little bit later because I didn't want to put everything together into one video PowerPoint. So as you're going through this also, I would still refer back to the slides um, and go back to look at some of these concepts further. So as we're talking about cardinality and connectivity, business rules are used to determine the cardinality and connections between relations. Um, and cardinality are described between two tables. Um, there are two types of cardinalities that we will be talking about. One is maximum cardinality and the other is minimum cardinality. So what is maximum cardinality? Maximum cardinality is the maximum number of entity instances that may participate in a relation. We denote this as one to one, one to many, and many to many. So at this point, it might be a little confusing. You might be thinking, what does this mean? But we are going to look at some good examples that would further clarify what does it mean. So actually what we're looking at is we're looking at two entities and we're going to try to determine what do you mean by a maximum cardinality? And this really goes back to the business rules and what is the relationship between the two um, entities that we're looking at. So again, there are three types of relationships or ways in which we can define maximum cardinality. And this is the one-to-many relationship, one-to-one -one relationship, and many-to-many -many relationship. So what exactly is a one-to-many relationship? So we're going to look, in, look at this in terms of an example. We have an entity here that's called department. And then we have another entity called employee. And we have related these two entities together. So we can say that we have a one-to-many relationship between department and employee based on the business rule that a department can have many employees. And when you go in the other way around, an employee can belong to only one department. So when you're looking at maximum cardinality, it is directional. And when I say it's directional, it means that we have to look at it in terms of department to employee. Department can have many employees. So it is many in the direction of department to employee. On the other hand, we're going to step to employee and look at department. Employee, according to the business rule, can work in only one department or belong to only one department. So we say that employee to department, the maximum cardinality in the direction from employee to department would be one. So when we look at it as a whole, we say the relation between the maximum cardinality between department and employee is one to many. Let's look at another example here of a one-to-one -one relationship. We are looking at an entity person and we are looking at another entity passport and we are trying to relate these two entities together. Again, it's important that we go back to the business rule that's given to you. Person can have only one passport and a passport belongs to only one person. So based on this business rule, we can say that this is a one-to-one -one relationship. So I can say in the direction from person to passport, person can have only one passport. So it's a one in from the direction of person to passport. Passport to person, a passport can belong to only one person. So that would also be one. So this would be a one-to-one -one maximum cardinality. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have a many-to-many -many relation. We're looking at the entity customer and we're looking at an, the entity property. And we are trying to determine the relationship between the maximum cardinality between these two entities. Again, we go back to the business rule that says a customer can have many properties um, and a property can, be, can belong to many customers. So when you think of customer to property, customer can have many properties. So that would be many. Property can belong to many customers. So again, this is based on the business rule. So I would always go to what the assumption is. Property can belong to many customers. So that would, be, that would mean property to customer is also many. So this is a many to many relationship. 
So let's look at an example here that's given to you. It's an example in relation to students and let's look at the business rule. So again, I want to emphasize that as you're working and trying to determine maximum cardinality, always go back to the business rules or the assumption that's given to you. And that's really the basis for what we would use to determine the maximum cardinality. And to take a step back from a practical perspective, this is also important because when we are going to design a database um, and define tables and relationships, we have to first understand what is the rules that the stakeholders are giving us? What kind of data are they having? What kind of rules define their data process? And that's exactly what we use. So we do not define the cardinality, the business and the requirements and the um, what are the needs of the database. That's what we have to take into account as we are designing and processing this. And again, keep in mind to step back, what are we doing here? What we are trying to achieve here is we are creating a model something like a flow chart that we're going to later use to create and implement this in a database management system. Because creating a database is a very iterative process. It requires a lot of people um, to give us feedback in an organization. So we go through these models, we share it with other stakeholders, and we keep on changing our model until we finally have a piece where we can say, this is good. And now we can move on to the next process of implementing this um, model into a and then further taking it into a database management system. Okay, so coming back to this example here, we have a, a rule that says a student can have only one student record. A student record belongs to only one student. A student can have only one mentor. A mentor can have many student mentees. A student can enroll in many courses. A course can have many students. So when we look at this particular case here, we can see that we have a number of entities or themes that emerge. One is student. Um, then we have student record here. Um, we have mentor here. Students are related to a mentor in the form of being mentees. And we can see that student, again, can enroll in courses. So we also have a relation that we can establish between student and courses. So now, if we want to determine the maximum cardinality, like we are going to go through the process of trying to identify it. So again, we have to always keep this business rule in mind as we are defining our maximum cardinality. So if we're looking at the maximum cardinality in the direction from student to student record, it is one because a student can have only one student record. Vice versa, in the direction from student record to student, it's also one because a student record belongs to one student. So when we are defining the maximum cardinality between student and student record and student, it would be one to one. So let's look at student and mentor. In the direction from student to mentor, it is one because when we look at the business rule, it says a student can have only one mentor. So based on that, we would say that it is a one here. In the direction from mentor to student, based on the business rule, a mentor can mentor many students. So that would be many. So when we are looking at the maximum direct um, cardinality between the entity mentor and student, it would be one to many. So now let's look at student and course. Again, going back to the business rule, student can enroll in many courses. So that would be many. Vice versa, a course can have many students in it. So that would be many. So when we are looking at the maximum cardinality between course and student, that would be many to many. So now that we have looked at maximum cardinality, let's try to understand what is minimum cardinality. So recall there are two types of cardinalities that we are going to determine between a relationship. The first is maximum cardinality, and we have looked at some examples of that. Now let's look at minimum cardinality. Minimum cardinality is the minimum number of entities that need to participate in a relationship. Minimum cardinality can either be mandatory, or we can also say required, or it can be optional or zero. So what we are trying to look at when you're looking at two entities, we are trying to determine the need for one um, to be mandatory versus the other to be optional. So let's look at an example to better understand what that means. 
So if we are considering a relationship between student and courses, again, to determine minimum cardinality, we need to go and look at the business rule or assumption that we are given. So if the business rule states that a student does not need to take a course to exist as a student, but a course need to have a student to exist, in this context of the relationship between student and course, we can say that the minimum cardinality in the direction of student to course is optional. Again, it's optional because it says that the business rule says that student doesn't need to take a course to exist as an entity or as a student. So that would be optional. But on the other hand, when we go back to the business rule, it says that a course needs to have a student in it to exist. So in the direction from course to student, the minimum cardinality would be mandatory. So it wouldn't be optional, it would be mandatory. Let's look at another example here. If we're considering the relationship between passport and person, if the business rule states that a person needs to have a passport to exist as an entity, and if a passport needs to have a person to exist as an entity, then the minimum cardinality of person to passport is mandatory and the minimum cardinality of passport towards person is also mandatory. So again, this is based on the business rule. So recap again, minimum cardinality can either be mandatory or it can be optional, which we also say as zero. Mandatory can also be called as required. And what determines it? It really goes back to the business rule. So let's look at another example of minimum cardinality. If we are considering the relationship between two entities, dentist and patient, in the context of the relationship between dentist and person, if we have a business rule that says that a person does not need to have a dentist, the minimum cardinality in the direction of person to dentist would be optional or we can also say zero. Now, if the business rule states that a dentist needs to have a patient to exist, the minimum cardinality in the direction of dentist to person would be mandatory. So again, this is based on the rule that says a dentist needs to have a patient to exist. So we have looked at two concepts here, maximum cardinality and minimum cardinality. It's important for you to understand what does these mean? Like what are the different um, values that these can have. So when we're looking at maximum cardinality, it can be one to one, one to many, many to many. When we're looking at minimum cardinality, you can have it as mandatory or optional. Now that we have understood what these concepts are, we'll go on further to understand how can we represent these cardinalities in an ER model.